control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. People watching is definitely the, the best part of a uh, UFO festival. Take your protein pill and put your helmet on. Ground control to Major Tom. Commencing countdown, engines on. Three, two, check ignition and may God's love be with you. I would hazard to guess that it's one of the most friendly, one of the most open, one of the most enjoyable conferences on the UFO conference circuit. This is ground control to Major Tom. You've really made the great And the papers want to know Whose shirt you wear And now it's time to leave the capsule If you dare Hello, Pacific North Weird here at the Hotel Oregon Rooftop Bar in McMinnville, Oregon for the 16th annual McMenamin's UFO Festival. Commemorating the Trent Farm UFO photos of 1950, which remain to this day some of the most credible visual evidence on the existence of unidentified flying objects. Come get abducted with us. The UFO Fest is both an academic and cultural celebration of the unidentified flying object phenomena. It boasts not only a panel of speakers on the subject of ufology, but an alien parade, street vendors, and an alien pet costume competition, and so much more. McMinimins came out here about 16 years ago and uh, redeveloped a old hotel that was built in 1905. And uh, the brothers believed that uh, they wanted to have a festival of their own. So uh, there was born the UFO Festival. It's a, based principally on a relatively high quality photograph that was taken on the 11th of May, 1950. McMinnville is the home of the Trent UFO sighting. And what that is is uh, Evelyn Trent was uh, out on the farm and she was gathering the chicks, uh, little chickadees, chickies, and uh, she was working out there in the field and all of a sudden she looks up and she sees this big flying disc in the sky. And she yells at her husband, uh, Paul, get out here with the camera. And uh, it takes him a little while to find the camera, but within about 30 seconds, he's out there, he's got the camera, and he takes a, he takes a photo and then he turns about 15 degrees and takes another photo and right at that moment the saucer in the sky is turning on axis and zoomed away. And um, the funny thing is is that they didn't even think about the role of film until one day they went to um, a Rexall store, you know, that's Rexall's before my time, before everybody else's time, drug, drug store, Rexall. They went to develop the pictures. The person at the drug store that developed the film noticed that it was uh, an interesting photo and which has been fairly thoroughly analyzed by photo analysts has been declared to be almost certainly authentic little question on that point I think and uh, it went viral basically over the news services of the time and uh, was picked up by Life magazine, Look magazine and other periodicals all around the world and then to this day they've tried to prove them to be fake and they haven't been able to because you look at the film and they had wedding picture, wedding picture, UFO picture, UFO picture, baby picture, baby picture. There were no test shots. In other words, if they were faking it, they would have like thrown the thing in the sky and said, snap it, Martha, and didn't do it. You don't see a lot of shots of them throwing a hubcap up in the air, trying to get the best shot that looks like a flying saucer. There were two shots that were published, and those were the only two shots on the reel. So you've got these two unimpeachable UFO shots from the 1950s that to this day are still remarkable to look at. I, I think I've seen some Roswell people come out here wondering what we're doing because uh, we're growing exponentially and we, we love it. It's a fun festival and whether you're a believer or a skeptic or just want to people watch, 
Yeah, this festival is for you. Everybody knows McMinnville is the place where flying saucers go from trips in outer space. Hotel Oregon, rendezvous, and big minimums for the party landing parade of the aliens. The parade. The parade is the most amazing thing because not only do you see like Star Wars characters and little kids dressing up as aliens and Klingons. Everybody goes to this terrestrial event to study UFOs from where they came and went. Respected speakers, writers with their slideshows. With their t-shirts, posters, buttons, books, and grainy videos. I think it's good to have, uh, you know, people, you know, get out and take a less uh, fearful uh, approach or attitude towards this phenomenon, because I don't think uh, that Hollywood's uh, take on it as being exclusively some kind of a invading monster sort of uh, phenomenon. That um, that that's really going to be a constructive attitude for what's coming in the future. Just between you and me, let me tell you what's happening. Just between you, what's beginning to take place in our society, without you ever being even vaguely conscious of it. Without you ever, sensory deprivation experiments. Native American narcotics. I gotta tell you about that t-shirt that he's wearing. I swear to God, it's mine. See, back in the old days, back in 1997, I was about his size. I'm big now. I look like Captain Kangaroo, but a weird paranormal Captain Kangaroo. The situation here now is that he's got my t-shirt on. I gave it to Goodwill, and I have a feeling that he stole it from Goodwill, or at least he knew where my clothing was, and he took it from me. Because I asked him where he got it, and he said, I got it at Goodwill. And I said, did it just happen to be in a pile of clothes? with another University of Roswell shirt, with UFO, and he goes, yes. So I have a feeling that he's wearing my Roswell UFO shirt that I got in 1997 at the 50th anniversary of the crash at Roswell. And so I'm pretty proud. I'm even more proud of the fact that he's wearing his away team triangle from Heaven's Gate, which, yeah, of course everybody wants one. I want one of those. He's got an away team patch. I knew Daryl Johnson, who was on the away team at uh, uh, Heaven's Gate. He was in a band called Dharma Combat. He was one of the guys who went with Applewhite to Hell Bop, where he went behind the comet right there at the sink, you know, underneath the sink there was behind the comet uh, another pet companion. That's where he went. And I'm sad to say, but he was a great guy, Daryl. He was a band rock star, you know, you name it. I don't know why he fell for this, but he did. So I, I'm very, I'm just impressed. I'm totally impressed with what I'm seeing here. Thank you. Uh, you know, Clyde, I'm also wearing your old underwear, too. So. Oh my God. He's wearing my old. You're kidding, right? <laughs> hey, Alex. Did you know that this is our second time at the McMenamin's UFO Festival? Of course I know that, Vince. I remember being here last year. Me too. In fact, it was the combination of the serious approach to ufology with that of the novel Street Celebration, which originally inspired us to create Pacific North Weird. Wait, what's Pacific North Weird? All you weirdos out there, you gotta tune in and drop out. Drop up and tune in. Check out Pacific North Weird. It's weird. Oh, there have been many really very interesting cases that have occurred in the Pacific Northwest. Bigfoot and UFOs. We are the original place where UFOs were sighted. Don't let anybody tell you it was Roswell. Well, we do have a high rate of sighting reports in Oregon. Down in Florence, Oregon, on the coast, not too far from where we're standing, uh, grandmother and her young grandson parked in her driveway after a shopping trip, and her grandson said, Grandma, what is that object over there hovering over the trees? She looked over and they saw a most bizarre craft. Looked something like a soccer ball with a thick belt wrapped around its equator. And it had what appeared to be an antenna off the side of it. They provided a very, very high quality illustration of what they had seen. In my judgment, 
a very high quality report submitted by highly reliable sources. And of course, there's this huge place called ESETI, this uh, UFO lookout point over there in Mount Adams, and it's run by James Gilliland, and you go there all the time, and you can count like 10, 15 UFOs in the sighting that are flying out there. You don't know what the hell they are, but they're amazing. I'm going to Mars, gonna get there first. Sleep under the stars, way back at the Earth. I'm going to Mars. So I'm building a spaceship in my backyard, I wrote a song about it. Uh, about 17 years ago, and uh, now I'm actually doing it. It's a 722 square foot structure. It's uh, 44 feet wide, and it's basically a, uh, a spaceship-shaped barn right now. It's no secret that I'm building a spaceship in my backyard. It looks a lot like this guy right up here. About 44 feet in diameter. It's all con it's all done on the outside. I just need to get the inside finished. If you folks would like to find out more about getting in on the ground floor of this, you can uh, check out the, uh, the picture here. It shows what it's looking like. There's a mailing list that gives you more information. Moon Rock Patrol, if you Google that, you can get more information. And see the slideshow that shows what it's all about. Anyway, I wrote a song about it. It's called Spaceship, and it goes exactly like this. in my backyard It's gonna go fast and it's gonna go far Fly around Jupiter, breakfast on Mars Building a spaceship in my backyard Yeah, 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 yeah I, uh, I always look forward to these conferences and just relish being here. And it's been amazing the quality of, of uh, people we've had come in here over the last 15 years. What is out there, I guess it's there for you to believe and decide what you want to do. Take you to Mercury, watch the sunrise. I'm 